Well, you might say, finally, social media platforms are scrambling now to find and remove all the videos showing the massacre inside a New Zealand mosque. Police say that the attacker live streamed the horrifying shooting. We know that. I saw some of it, so did my colleagues. It is horrible stuff. It was one of two attacks at these mosques during Friday prayer uh, that left 49 people dead, dozens more injured. Our Christina Leshy is with us on the social media side of this because we know that hours before the attack, this manifesto was posted to Twitter and 8chan. We know the attack was live streamed. We know the video was subsequently posted. So, I mean, what are the social media companies, these huge platforms doing about it? This exposes a major weakness for these platforms yet again. Uh, this is not something new. Look, all major companies, all the major companies, Google, Facebook, Twitter, put out statements immediately saying that they either took down the shooter's account or tried to stop the spread of this video. I want to point out something very specific on Facebook's statement itself. It said that the New Zealand police alerted us to a video on Facebook shortly after the live stream commenced and we removed both the shooter's Facebook account and the video. The big question here, Poppy and Jim, is why did the police have to tell Facebook what was happening on its own platform? Yeah. And more importantly, how long did it take for Facebook to pull this video down? We know that they were alerted shortly after it commenced. Look, we've put these questions to Facebook and have not heard back yeah. yet. But the broader problem here is why aren't these platforms able to police the content yeah. on their site? And look, these companies have put up all kinds of excuses when it comes to this. And I say excuses, yeah. but you know, they, they see it as legitimate reasons. For example, they say that people sharing these videos are very intent on getting around their monitors. So they'll make small modifications to pictures and videos that make it harder for algorithms and artificial intelligence to pick them up. But at the end of the day, this definitely exposes these companies to criticism that they are not making this top priority and that's, that they should be investing more in policing their own platforms. And, and that's exactly the thing, because they're facing the same questions here that they faced repeatedly for years after things like this. And, and you just wonder if the technology is so good at, I don't know, we were talking before, capturing your face in an image in a crowd, uh, right. why, why not technology to capture gunshots as they're happening or, or blood on the screen? I mean, th th this video, uh, w you would think technology could catch it. Why, why is the technology not caught up? You're right. But you have to think about these platforms at their essence. At their essence, they are made so that popular video is proliferated and shared. So the question becomes, how do you essentially go against the forces of the actual program and algorithms that are designed to do what the platforms want them to do? So it's this constant t uh, pull and push that these companies are dealing with. And I think that's what they're going to have to answer for. And look, they can come out there and say, we've put X amount of people on this. Mm -hmm. we've, been, we've put X amount of money. But when these things happen and people see these videos being shared, they have to be held accountable. It's not yeah. working. Yes. It's not working. Uh, Jim, it's a great point. I wonder, and Christina, great reporting, uh, what Congress is going to do about it, right? Are they going to hold more hearings? Are they going to talk about what are you actually going to do on this front? We'll stay on it for sure.